Okay, so we'll start recording this and let's take a look at number nine. Suppose you buy stock for $100 on Tuesday. Okay, so on Tuesday it's worth $100. Okay, on Wednesday it's up 10%. So um, what we want to do is look at a 10% increase. So first I want to find 10% of 100. You know, it is blank, right? So 0 0.10 times 100. When I multiply, I get 10. So a 10% increase is a $10 increase. Okay, so then the new price is going to be $100 plus $10. So we get $110. All right. On Thursday, it's down 10%. Okay. So maybe we'll do Thursday in a different color. Okay. So I want to find 10% of its current price on Wednesday, right? So I want 10% of $110. Okay. So I get 11. Um, so I want the price to go down by 11. So the new price is going to equal 110 minus 11, which is 99. Okay, so going up by 10% and then down by 10% doesn't land us back in the same spot because we're not taking 10% of the same thing each time. Okay. So to answer the first question, how much is it worth now on Thursday? Okay, on Thursday, it's worth $99. Okay, what if it lost 10% first and then gained 10%? Does that make a difference? Okay, the easy way, or I think the straightforward way, not the fast way, but the straightforward way to do this is just to repeat the whole process to say, all right, let's go down 10% and then up 10% and see what happens. Okay, so uh, going down 10% first, We're going to take 10% of 100, which is $10. So go down $10. Okay, so then the Wednesday price would be $90. And now go up 10%. So we take 10% of $90, which is $9. And $90 plus $9 is $99, so our Thursday price is $99. Okay, so I think both of these are counterintuitive. Going down 10% and up 10%, right? First of all, that, that not landing you back where you started seems counterintuitive. But also going down first and then up and going up first then down does not seem to make a difference. Um. Okay. That's just a little fun with percents. Does that make sense, Ann? Uh, yeah. So, um, especially something where it asks, does that make a difference? Uh, let me make a comment on that too. Every single question is going to have a an optional tab on it where you can submit your work. Um, so as you're going through the test, um, you, you can take, you know, if you're doing, hopefully you should be doing, you know, work on notebook paper or whatever. And um, as you do that, if you just, you know, snap pictures, you can upload them to each question. And um, that way, like if you make a mistake or something, you can still get partial credit. Okay. Um, 
but also, you know, on, on a question like this where you're sort of asked to explain, okay, that then you can upload your work and, and, you know, that way it's, I think, a little bit easier to make your explanation. Uh, so upload either during or after either one uh, either one will work um, maybe maybe I'll put out a couple practice questions just so you can see the formatting for that so if it was like a 12 percent change you do the exact same thing yeah and if you went down 12 percent and then up 12 percent you would land in, uh, you would not land in the same spot but going up first or down first would not make a difference. So there's nothing special about the number 10. Um, so would it ever be like 10% uh, down and, and then like 10, 12% up or vice versa? A question like that if you think about it mathematically, is kind of like when we have sales tax and we have a discount. So a discount will bring the price down by a percentage and then the sales tax adds on a percentage. So, you know, when you ask, will it ever be like that? Yeah, actually you've done a lot of questions like that with the sales tax, it just doesn't feel the same, right? It's, it, you know, it has a different context to it, um, but the math is the same. So in answer to that question, yeah. Uh, how much time for the test? You'll have you'll have two hours. Now, it should not take two hours. Um, when I create a test, I come up with you know a, a test that fits a certain time frame. For an online test, I like to give extra time to account for maybe a slow internet connection or trouble loading a page or whatever other difficulties might arise. So you get a little bit of a, a, a buffer. Um, when you're taking a test online. So you'll have a two hour window, but you know, th this is not a two hour long test. It should, it should not take two hours. Okay, so asking about problem seven with sales tax and a discount, you always do the discount first because the sales tax is applied to um, the price that you actually pay, not, not the sticker price. Okay, so um, as we just saw, whether you go up first and then down or down first then up, you land to the same number. So if I applied 7.25% sales tax and then took 25% off, or if I take 25% off first and then add 7.25% sales tax, I'll end up at the same amount that I pay for the desk. However, I don't end up with the same amount of sales tax that I pay. Okay, if you apply the sales tax first, you end up giving too much money to you know the state or whatever for the sales tax, um, and, and you sort of jip out the seller. Um, so no, the, the way that it's actually computed in real life, you always apply the discount first. Um, and on a problem like this, I sort of, you know, structure that in because I ask you the discount first and then the tax. So that it's sort of I'm trying to force you in that direction. But that's, um, you're always supposed to apply the discount first if there is one. Any other questions about the practice exam or about the test? Okay, so we'll look at number four. And then a question about the test. How are the questions going to be structured? Is there going to be multiple choice or no? 
um, there's not going to be a whole lot of multiple choice. Just like in your homework, there wasn't really a whole lot of multiple choice. Um, there, there's a few here and there, for example, right, while you're doing a, a tax question, you, you might have a multiple choice. Is this person going to take the standard deduction or the itemized deductions? Um, but, you know, that that's like one part of a question. The, the questions, there, there aren't going to be any like straight multiple choice questions. It's going to be uh, mostly entering in, in numbers and, and a little bit of uh, free response. So, similar to the practice exam, right? Like, I don't think there's any multiple choice anywhere on here, right? Um, okay. The wording for question four. Um, the way that I like to go about these um, finding, you know, percent questions is to take each word and translate them directly into a symbol, okay? So when I see what, I can write the variable x, right? Because it's just some variable. Percent of is code word for multiply. It also tells me that I'm going to find a percent in the end, okay? And then I have the number 130, okay? Um, the word is in math translates to an equal symbol, right? Is, you know, like uh, apples are red would be like writing in math, apple equals red, okay? Then we have the number 182. All right, once you write a math equation, then it becomes a lot more clear what operation to do, right? Then you don't get confused about whether you're multiplying or dividing and dividing which numbers. I can see, okay, in order to get X by itself, I have to divide both sides by 130. Okay, and maybe this one is confusing because you're finding a percent, but you end up with a number uh, bigger than one, which means you're gonna have a percent bigger than 100%. Okay, so 182 divided by 130 gives me 1.4. And since I want a percent to convert to a percent, we move the decimal over twice. So this is 140%. Um, so yeah, are they are they randomized and, and not in a, you know unit order? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah. So it's kind of jumbled around here. I think well here it's kind of jumbled too, right? So we have percents and then we have the um, simple interest and then it jumps into taxes. Okay, um, so kind of like the practice exam. Um, so taxes and then we have compound interest and then we have savings formula, and then installment loan. I guess a lot of these are kind of in the right order, but not exactly. Okay, number six says more than. Yeah, so let's let's take a look at that. Sometimes the language isn't straightforward enough for the our little translation trick. Okay, so um, I'm going to translate as much as I can. So what number, so that gives me an X, is is equals 35%, so that's 0.35, 35% more than 80. Okay, so that's where I have to be a little bit careful. Um, I want 35% more than, okay, so what we're going to do is first figure out, well, what is 35% of 80? So 35% of 80 is 0.35 times 80, okay, which is 28, all right. So now if I want to find 35% more than 80, that would be 28 more than 80. So that's like, 28 plus 80. 
Okay, so I, I broke that one into pieces. Figuring out 35% more than 80 by itself is a little bit simpler, and then I put that into the bigger sentence. Well, feel free. Anyone who wants to ask questions, go right ahead. Um, you know, the, the idea of the practice exam is to have gone through it on your own, get stuck on some stuff, ask some questions, get it answered, and then when you take the test, you, you know, you should be hopefully very well prepared. Is there going to be a class tomorrow? Um, I think yes. So my original plan was maybe to not have class tomorrow, and um, but I, I would be introducing the next unit today. Um, since the notes for that aren't up yet, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to see if I can introduce the um, the next unit tomorrow, um, just so that we have the notes out, so I get the video out, um, and, and people can get started on that as soon as they're done with the test, if they like. Um, so yeah, we'll have class, um, you know, like normal, but, but instead of going over the test, I'm going to be starting the logic unit. Uh, afterwards, we can, we can take any, any questions on the, on the practice test, if you like. Um, the test you'll have a fixed amount of time for, but you'll be able to start at any time you like. So you have the whole day to start and take the test. But the um, once you start it, you're you're gonna have to finish it in a in a two hour window. When I say the majority of the exam is loans and taxes, well, I mean, I kind of think to the notes that we did, um, you know, we did a lot of stuff with, with loans, both with compound interest and then with, you know, simple interest and then with the actual loan formula. So that was, that was a few sections. Taxes was a couple sections, right? Sales tax and then income tax was one section, but it was a really big one. Um, then we have, if you throw in, you know, credit cards and saving money, you have almost the entire unit. So, yeah. Kind of covers it. From the perspective of looking at topics, you know, it doesn't feel like we really covered that much in terms of finances, but there's just so many details to each thing, and we only get, you know, a few weeks, so this was all we're really effectively able to cover here. Any other questions? Well, we had a really long class yesterday, so maybe we're balancing it out with a short one today. So uh, if anybody still has questions,